United States Naval Institute and the United States Naval Academy have a deep shared history. The Naval Institute has been continuously headquartered on the Naval Academy Yard since 1873 and remains here today at its newly refurbished home in Beach Hall. Until 1949, the crests of the two institutions were published together on the cover of the Proceedings magazine. Today, at the Naval Academy, students and faculty work and live in buildings named for notable graduates who have served with distinction as officers in the Navy or Marine Corps. Many do not realize that these officers were often members of the Naval Institute and wrote articles for proceedings throughout their careers. We have compiled excerpts from the writings from proceedings that highlight the continued relevance of the periodical as an important window into history and the development of our Navy and Marine Corps into the well-oiled machines that they are today. We hope that their stories will inspire the next generation to continue writing about the state of our Navy and Marine Corps and to serve as an example of the interconnected and ongoing bonds between the Naval Academy and the Naval Institute. Admiral Chester Nimitz, USNA Class of 1905, is best known as Commander of the Pacific Fleet during World War II. Built in 1973, Nimitz Library offers a location for midshipmen to research and to study. The building also hosts a special collections archive, a coffee shop, classrooms, tutoring centers, and private study rooms. An excerpt from then Lieutenant Nimitz from December 1912 proceedings, titled Military Value and Tactics of Submarines, reads, in estimating the military value of the submarine or submersible as compared with the modern battleship, we find that each has distinct and separate value. The battleship on account of its mobility, as defined above, can operate where submarines or submersibles of the present day cannot go due to their lack of mobility. Nimitz was an advocate for the submarine community throughout his career, especially for the creation of nuclear-powered submarines. Admiral Stephen B. Luce, USNA Class of 1848, was committed to furthering officers' education and founded the Naval War College. Historically, Luce Hall has always housed the Professional Development Department at USNA, including the Seamanship and Navigation Department, as well as Leadership Curriculum. Although Luce wrote many times for the proceedings, as Commodore, he wrote in the December 1883 proceedings, which proves to be his most popular article, titled War Schools. There is one view of this subject well worthy of consideration. Would not a postgraduate course have the effect of modifying the curriculum of the Naval Academy by the transfer to a later period of studies better suited to a more matured minds? With these hasty remarks, I respectfully submit to the intelligent consideration of the members of the Institute the question of establishing a postgraduate course for the study of the science of war, ordinance, and international law and such a cognate branches of the three grand divisions as may be determined upon. Commodore Luce's article led to the creation of the Naval War College in 1884 to educate and develop leaders at specific stages in their careers from all services. Rear Admiral Alfred Thayer Mahan, USNA Class of 1859, was an exceptional naval officer, strategist, and historian. He is best known as the author of The Influence of Sea Power Upon History, published in 1890, which had huge strategic importance for global navies during the 19th century. Mahan Hall opened in 1907 and was built as a centerpiece of three academic buildings and is the original library. Today, the building still hosts theater performances, schools of production, guest lectures, and other special events. In the April 1906 issue of Proceedings, Captain Mahan wrote in his article, Reflections, Historic and Others Suggested by the Battle of the Sea of Japan. Granting such a battleship, we would say that to obtain increase of speed by increasing the size, whether the proportion of gunpowder be maintained or not, though especially if not, is also a mistake, for it means one of two things, fewer ships or a larger national budget. Mahan used this proceedings article to argue that slower ships with more firepower would be more useful than faster, less equipped ships. This would help shape the direction of the future navy. Fleet Admiral William Bull Halsey Jr., USNA Class of 1904, is best known for his contributions to the Pacific Campaign during World War II. These included decisive naval conflicts such as the Battle of Guadalcanal, the Solomon Islands Campaign, and the Battle of Leyte Gulf. On the Naval Academy Yard, Halsey Fieldhouse serves as the home of the indoor track and field teams and as the primary weight room for the Brigade of Midshipmen.
In the May 1952 issue of Proceedings, a retired Fleet Admiral Halsey wrote about his experiences at Leyte Gulf in his article, The Battle for Leyte Gulf. He wrote, The credit for our overwhelming victory belongs in full measure to all who participated in its many phases, and most particularly to those pilots and sailors who made the supreme sacrifice in order that our cause might prevail. Halsey's article attempted to justify the loss of life at Leyte Gulf while he was under investigation for his actions during the war. Fleet Admiral Ernest J. King, USNA class of 1901, served as the Chief of Naval Operations during World War II. King was instrumental in focusing on an offensive attack against Japan following Pearl Harbor, despite a push for resources in the Atlantic Theater. King Hall is the Brigade Wardroom and Dining Hall for Midshipmen at the Academy. King Hall boasts a 4,400-person capacity, allowing the Brigade of Midshipmen to simultaneously come together to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Admiral King published his wartime article, Our Navy at War, in June of 1944. His proceedings post reads, For more than two years, the United States has been engaged in worldwide war. Our geographical position, our wealth, resources, and industrial development combined with an unfaltering will to victory have established and enhanced our position as one of the most dominant powers among the United Nations. King's article was part of his wartime report to the Secretary of the Navy covering operations up to March 1, 1944. Major General John A. Lejeune, USNA class of 1888, served as the 13th Commandant of the Marine Corps from 1920 to 1929. He led the soldiers of the Army's 2nd Division to victory in the Battle of St. Mihal and the Masseuse Agon Offensive during World War I. Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune in North Carolina is named in his honor. On the yard, Lejeune Hall is home to the men and women's swim and dive teams, the wrestling team, and various midshipmen support activities. While the Commandant of the Marine Corps, Major General Lejeune wrote on the foreword of the November 1928 issue of Proceedings. An excerpt reads, The willing, thoroughgoing, and practical devotion of the Marine to the cause of his Navy and of his country is perpetuated in his motto Semper Fidelis and represents his most sacred tradition. We have always appreciated the superior importance of personnel over material. General Lejeune built upon the Marine Corps' traditions and values to modernize the nation's standing expeditionary force. Captain Edward Beach Jr., USNA class of 1939, served as a submariner and later became a novelist. His most iconic novel, Run Silent, Run Deep, was published in 1955 and was adapted into a film by the same name. Beach Hall is located on Hospital Point in one of the old Naval Hospital wings. The hospital was originally built in 1907, with the Eastern Wing added in 1941 and renovated in 2020. This building hosts the United States Naval Institute and the Jack C. Taylor Conference Center. In the January 1949 issue of Proceedings, Lieutenant Commander Beach published his article, Our Duty Lies Before Us. An excerpt reads, For every man who advocates a reasoned, balanced approach to the problem, there are hundreds who vociferously claim that air power is all we need, or that the atomic bomb is the answer. With regard to the Navy, control of the sea will prove as decisive in future wars as it has in the past. Lieutenant Commander Beach's article foreshadowed the revolt of the admirals that caused deep cuts in Navy funding and placed further emphasis on Air Force nuclear bombing. Rear Admiral John Warden served as the 7th USNA Superintendent from 1869 to 1874. He was the captain of the USS Monitor during the Civil War. Most notably, he commanded her during the Battle of Hampton Roads in 1862, which was the first ever naval battle between ironclad steam-powered vessels. In 1873, Rear Admiral Warden became the first president of the United States Naval Institute. Though he never wrote for proceedings, his name is frequently mentioned in articles from past and present as a prominent member and founder of the institution. Warden Field is the Brigade of Midshipmen's parade field that is steeped in history and tradition. The men and women of the brigade march in the footsteps of many famous Navy and Marine Corps officers and all graduates who have served with distinction in both peace and war. Many of these great Navy and Marine Corps officers began their storied careers at the United States Naval Academy. 
In the search for the finest sea service, these leaders believed in the mission of the United States Naval Institute to provide an independent forum for those who dare to read, think, speak, and write to advance a professional literary and scientific understanding of sea power and other issues critical to global security. We hope that these leaders will help current midshipmen and the next generation of sea service leaders to believe in this mission to continue what these great officers have started. For more information, please visit our website linked down below.